All right, welcome to Technical Writing Week 7. So today we are going to talk about definitions, explanations, and instructions. So when you are writing definitions, you are writing to inform. So you need to be aware of surrounding definitions. Lots of words have several different definitions, several different contexts, um, and your audience may be aware of these different contexts, is aware of these definitions. So you want to arrange your definition potentially, uh, depending on how much weight those other definitions have, how aware your audience would be of them. You might want to um, position your definition in relation to those others, right? You might want to say, well, this is defined in this other context as this. Um, here's what we're talking about in this context. Or uh, like... This isn't really an example from technical writing, but like in scholarly writing, um, you might, uh, if you are trying to give a term a new definition or just sort of narrow down the definition according to what it is you're going to write about, you might take a, take a little bit of time in the beginning right, of your article to say, here's how I'm using this term in this context for this purpose. So only define what you need to define based on your audience and purpose, and this is just part of being efficient. Um, think of who your, who your audience is, like what their level of familiarity with the topic is, um, and or what it is that you're trying to be able to get them to do with the overall instructions, or what it is that you're trying to be able to get them to do uh, in the rhetorical situation in which you are presenting the definitions. Um, so if your audience is new to the topic, they're probably going to need basic terms defined or basic idea, uh, basic terms defined, basic ideas addressed, basic objects, mechanisms, and processes. Um, so the categories of objects and mechanisms have a little bit of an overlap. Um, mechanisms generally is referring to something that has moving parts that work together. So an object may be a hammer, whereas a mechanism may be like a clock. A process would be something like installing a security system or creating a particular kind of image in Photoshop. With an audience that is a lot more familiar with the topic, um, it's okay to use jargon with them and then you won't need to define as many simple ideas um, as, as many simple terms. Um, there may still be some definition that you do there. It's probably not as much as you're going to be doing with an audience who is new to the topic, but if you are doing definition with an audience who is familiar with the topic, then it's probably going to be something a bit more complex than what you would do with an audience new to the topic. Don't use the term that you're defining in the definition. So you wouldn't want to say like a definition is a phrase that is used to define a term, right? Because then you're using define in the definition of the word definition and basically it's circular logic. It's called begging the question because you aren't really explaining anything. You are just calling on the term itself to in to define itself and then you haven't said anything at that point. There's there's no uh, there's no useful logic there. Um, don't ramble. Right, as I said before, you want to avoid any superfluous information because you want to give somebody a definition that's that's nice and efficient. It gives them all the detail that they need. It gives them all the information they're going to remember, and then it is, doesn't add any extra superfluous information that's going to sort of cloud their memory, right? Because they want to be able to access it. They want to be able to remember, like access that memory of the definition and apply it without having any other data that's just going to cloud the space. Um, as opposed to definitions which just inform, explanations actually go beyond informing to do a little bit of convincing because in the act of explaining, not only is there the implication of authority through the voice, but there's also a logical argument being made when you're explaining uh, when you're explaining how something operates. You're, you're naming each part, right? You're associating it with the definition for that name, you're talking about what it does, you're talking about how to be safe with it. All of these are logical arguments, and especially like if there's an image there or um, when you when you give an idea of what the object looks like or how it works, you are showing evidence for the claims that you've made about that object. You're making claims about the object and then showing evidence to support those claims. Um, and that moves you beyond the realm of informing to actually convincing and sort of getting the audience to believe the things that you've said. Um, and finally, instructions themselves are actually, they're, they're debatably to inform and to persuade, depending on how you want to look at it. Um, 
No one ever says with instructions like you should do this, and it's not necessarily uh, led up to with a, with a really formal, this is this, and it's this way in this sense. So here's the information, here's the support for the information, here's the instructions. Sometimes you just get the instructions by themselves without all the explanatory information before that, um, and so you don't have all that buildup. But... Um, there is always an implied appeal to authority, as there is uh, as there is with the explanations and definitions. Um, but beyond that, um, what you want to think about is the fact that instructions are so often written in the imperative form as if it's a command telling you to do something. So in that sense, yes, it kind of is persuasive. But in another sense, it's just informing you of how something could be done. Okay, so let's move right on to the topic of writing instructions. So instructions are extremely important because they ensure that the audience meets their goal safely, productively, and efficiently. Um, you don't want to lead the audience to chop off their fingers accidentally when that could have been avoided by giving clear instructions. Um, be clear, avoid superfluous information, I'll be saying that a lot. Um, consider all potential safety risks. Treat instructions in the same way that you would any other piece of writing. Um, go through the entirety of your writing process. Draft and redraft. Listen to your writing and test out your instructions. Um, write for your readers. Be clear and be direct. Give details where they need to be given. If you're writing for an audience who is new to the topic, as with your written instructions, you will need to walk them through steps that you could skip with an audience who is more familiar to the topic as with your oral instructions. So with your written instructions, you're writing to somebody who's new to the topic. With your oral instructions, you're writing to somebody who's more familiar. Um, and you can use the same, uh, the same topic, the same task for both of these, but fundamentally the way that you address them is going to be different. How much information that you, that you give them is going to be different. The kinds of information that you give them is going to be different. Which things you explain, which things you define, all of this is going to be different based on who your audience is. With an audience more familiar with the topic or task, you can go into more detail about the nuances of the topic or task. You can use jargon. You can assume the audience already has some of the skills, tools, or knowledge to perform the basic or intermediate steps involved in whatever the process is that you are instructing them with, uh, for. For example, when you're giving instructions on how to work on an automobile, a beginner needs to have the list of tools laid out with images and perhaps explanations or descriptions of those tools to give some context and help the audience acquire the tools or help them acquire the tools. The expert audience doesn't need this. They've probably already got all the tools they need. They probably have a toolbox there with them or they've already gathered the maybe the tools that they're going to use for that job. So you might want to say, here are the tools we use for this job. But you won't necessarily you won't go into any details about what those tools are or what they do because somebody who's familiar with the topic already knows those things. Okay, so back to writing instructions. Um, so if you look on page four twelve, he's got a really good guide here as to how you can format your instructions. You don't have to format your instructions this way, but I think. Um, and, and it's important to set the numbers off by themselves. It's important even to, and he hasn't really done this so much, but have space between your numbers um, and space between the steps. And it's important to have space between the numbers and the steps. So like even like setting your numbers off in their own column is really good because you want your audience to be able to navigate back to the exact step they were just at or the next step they're going to as soon as they look at the page, right? You don't want them to have to say, okay, where was I? Let me find it again. And then look through a big block of text trying to figure out where they were at. You want them to be able to find the number of the step really easily and then find the information corresponding to that step and have it be set off from surrounding information. And finally, with your instructions, the conclusion should not be a summary, but rather it should be uh, one or two final instructions that are getting the, that are leading the audience to assess the work that they've done to make sure that they followed all of the instructions, the entire set of instructions correctly. So what they'll be trying to figure out is, is the work that I've done safe? Is the work that I've done efficient? Have they met the goal that they set out to? Right. Um, does the object that they put together uh, perform the function that they needed to or the mechanism that they put it, that they put together? Did they uh, did they follow the process correctly? Do they have the right results? Um, and the last two instructions or the last instruction should help them be able to assess that. 
Um, so finally, let's talk about your written instructions assignment. Okay, so you'll be considering your options for your instructional video project, so you can think of this as sort of a project-based deal if you want. You're writing a set of instructions for an audience that is entirely new to the topic, so you'll be doing a lot of defining and a lot of explaining. Um, and I've added here as well, um, I want you to include images where they're appropriate to provide detail and clarity of instruction. And this is something that you'll need to determine on a case-by-case -case basis, whether or not you need to provide images, how many images you need to provide. And we'll talk about this when I look at your drafts. And if there's something that is really complex, um, if um, you can determine this, if there's something that's really complex, if there's something that needs more explanation, I'll let you know that. Um, but another way to tell this is just try and follow your own instructions, right? Look at them, listen to them, read them. Go out and try and follow them as if you're in a vacuum and you have no more information about the subject. You have no information about no more information about the task or how to do it. And just follow them blindly and say, wow, is this, is this safe? Is this accurate? And you can figure it out by doing it that way, by putting yourself in the shoes of the audience. Um, and finally, what I want you to what I need you to do is just take all of the design principles that you've learned in the past projects in this class, including um, including numbering, like we talked talked about it in the document design project and apply those principles to your written instructions document. Okay. And I look forward to looking at your drafts and I look forward to delivering you another lecture in week eight. Take care till then.